Welcome back. If you're getting together with family and friends to commemorate Juneteenth and maybe you need a little help with the menu, chef and partner at the upcoming late August restaurant, Don Burrell can help. And she is back with an easy recipe to honor the special holiday and one she'll be serving at her annual culinary celebration of Juneteenth. Good yes. to see you back in the kitchen. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure also to share this uh, recipe with you guys and, and to help you uh, help me celebrate Juneteenth. Yeah, yeah. well, happy Juneteenth. And yeah. tell us a little bit about the, the recipe and why you specifically chose this yes. one. Um, well, first of all, watermelon is a wonderful summer fruit, right? And so, like, I love to, I love making salads and savory expressions with it. I grill it sometimes or whatever. But it is truly meaningful for Juneteenth because it is, it is a, a staple of the holiday. It kind of represents like some of the bloodshed and and um, th during that that time period um, before people knew they were free. Okay. Wow. Yes. And this inspiration, I will say, your plate looks delicious. This is basically a no-cook dish, right? Yes. Um, yes, with the exception of the uh, shito, if you choose to make it. But uh, okay. there are some prepared versions as well. And the shito, yes. for people who are unfamiliar, this is um, a shito is a is a Ghanaian uh, chili paste that also has um, dried fish in it, uh, a little bit of tomato, um, Scotch bonnet peppers, um, and some onions, and okay. it's put down and then uh, pureed. So a little sauce. heat there. A little bit of heat a with bit that of heat. the sweetness of exactly. the watermelon. Yes, okay, yes, well let's yes. get to the the details of this dish. You're going to put it together because yes. again, this is one of your favorite dishes that. You're excited about and will be featured uh, at your event as well. Well, a rendition of this okay. dish will definitely be um, be at the the event. But um, I'm using it just to, as a pure celebration. You know, collard greens are essential to the African American and Southern cuisine, and watermelon is um, is uh, is a part of the holiday. So I just kind of fuse both of them together. Okay, yeah. perfect. And Don, yes. you're going to put us to work. Can I just point yes. out how beautiful this dish looks? I because know. it's one thing to create something that tastes really good. It's another thing to create a dish. That that looks very appetizing, and you have done it there, Don. Well, so thank you. I'm I'm happy that you're trusting Courtney and um, <laughs> oh, me just to, me to, to, to try <laughs> to put this together. Well, yeah, it's advanced, but we can do it. So where do we I begin? I know you can. All right. So I I broke down some watermelon for you um, in some in some nice uh, pieces. Okay. Uh, I, I like to use the hearts. And so what you're going to do? I'm left-handed. Sorry. So this let me just do that. What you're going to do is just cut it up organically in small okay. small pieces enough to fit on the for oh. Too big? No, no yeah, we want this way. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, just. Oh, you want it in it? Okay, I thought you meant little chunks. So you yeah, yeah. organically yeah, like irregular like, shapes? Yeah, irregular maybe? shapes. Oh, yeah. okay. You're well, fine. all right. I should have listened. It's okay. Okay. There you go. We there have we watermelon cut. You put that right in the bowl. Okay. Put that down there for Perfect. you. Uh huh. Oh. And maybe cut a little bit more since yeah. I'm making a salad for both okay. of you guys. And while you're doing that, um, I'm going to break down. These are collards. Now, collards are great for salad. Go ahead. Okay, sorry. Oop. You're good. They're great. They're great for salads, um, but you have to kind of break them down a little bit. Super nutritious. Um, what you're going to do is just uh, toss them with olive oil and some salt and lemon juice and get these guys going. And you're doing yeah. this by hand, Chef. That's yes. because um, you can more evenly coat Yes, the and greens? you kind of also want to break it up a little bit. You kind of want to smash the, smash the greens a little because these are rigid greens. They're winter greens. Um, and you want them just to kind of absorb the oil, the olive oil and the lemon juice and become like different texturally. Oh, yes. interesting. And does yes. the lemon help it break down? Yes, the, acidity the lemon there? Olive, and olive oil, all three things help it break down. Okay. So, um, and then I let them sit for a little bit and they look like this. Would you leave so them out or refrigerate it while um, it sits? They only need to sit for 15, excuse me, 15, 20 minutes. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, next, you're going to cut these up. Okay. Yeah, so these are little tomatoes. They're so cute. I got them from That's the farmer's beautiful. market. And you're just going to cut a few of these guys, take off the top. Okay. Uh, and, and those are like tiny grape tomatoes. Can can viewers use any kind of tomato? Yes, yeah, so they can also use um, anything from the the farmer's market or the grocery store that's kind of small. You can also cut up large tomatoes, uh, salad tomatoes, anything that you want. So I just beautiful. find them so cute and they're just a huge pop of flavor. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to use my shito. Um, I'm going to make a, a vinaigrette out of it, actually. I'm going to put a little bit of lemon juice in here. Where can Oops. we get that? Um, so you can find this, um, this chili paste at any African store. Okay. And um, it's normally in the refrigerated section. Ah, okay. And what kind of consistency are you going for here? 
Um, so it's more so um, making sure that it's uh, like a vine vinaigrette, okay. um, but you definitely want something that will fall off the spoon, um, kind of like a salad dressing. Okay. Yeah. So a little thicker. Yeah, a little okay. bit thicker. And then... It smells just lovely. Mm -hmm. Just going to toss your watermelon in there, and then just get it all flavored. Maybe a little bit more lemon juice. And while you're putting this together, uh, mm -hmm. Chef, tell us a little bit more about the Juneteenth Jubilee. So this is back. Uh, Juneteenth Jubilee is back. It was a wonderful celebration last year. I had uh, some of my uh, fellow Top Chef contestants with me. Um, but this year I have the wonderful um, Maria Russell um, coming to cook with me. And she is a, a Michelin star decorated chef. I believe she's the only black female chef that has a Michelin star. Fantastic. But she's um, she's gonna come and cook, and we're gonna cook. This is a little bit of mascarpone that I'm just spreading here. This imparts ri richness into the dish. Just, you know, because who doesn't like Right, a little added oomph there. And then a little added oomph. Yeah, um, so uh, we are, our, we are having our Juneteenth dinner on uh, July, excuse me, June 17th, and um, and we hope that you all can make it. And what we're going, what we're doing is we're celebrating. It's a culinary celebration. It is truly um, Southern food that is elevated and um, and meaningful to the culture. And uh, and what we want, what we're trying to do is is make it a thing where. Um, you know, southern food will belong on any stage, and mm -hmm. so why not? Why not um, bring about a celebration in a fine five-course dinner? That is fantastic. And and the event doesn't just celebrate black chefs; it's also black farmers. The whole community of yes. people, the pipeline uh, of people it takes to get the food from the farm to your place. Exactly, and and you know, black farmers uh, and also black you know people who will support us, support uh, us in our endeavors, and something like bringing about awareness to a holiday such as Juneteenth. That is fantastic. So it could just, you know, I'm, I am community oriented, but I'm also, I love all cultures. So yeah, anybody who wants to celebrate with me. And we can't wait to celebrate with you for this meal and then also your uh, opening of your restaurant coming yes. later this year. Yes, yeah, so um, we have a late August opening very soon, later this year, and what we're gonna do here we go. And I have another one here. Okay. There you go. Thank Let you. Let me finish with a little bit of salt. All right. Boom. Boom. Lovely. Beautiful. It's so I think you need a little bit more shito. You do? Yeah. Oh, huh. So. Going in. Mm. Here we go. Mm. Very good. Thank you. So I late all this will be open in um, September. And that that is what that's our target date, and we're we're really really excited. I know the t the city's waiting for us, and um, we're ready to serve you guys. It's a labor of love. We can't yes. wait for you all to open. The sweetness and the spice is just the right combo. Taste it for yourself for a link to grab your tickets for the Juneteenth Jubilee. You can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Just look for that scene on Houston Life section. Chef Don Burrell, it's always great to see you. It's great Thank to see you. you too. This is delicious. I love being here. Thank you for having it's me. It's so good. Thanks appreciate for coming it. by. We do yeah. appreciate it. Good to see you. And after the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including some fashion inspiration for the dads in your life. We'll be right back.